Today we're starting a monthly series. Man, what a powerful, I could just worship all morning long. And just, that's why we're here today. And I thank God for that. But once a month, I had promised at the beginning of this year, and I skipped January to get things kicked off in 2021. But once a month, I want to bring to you truth about world religion. My Bible says that people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And a lot of times you'll stand in front of a Mormon, you'll stand in front of a, uh, a Muslim or a Buddhist or Scientology and just not know what to say. And, and we know what we believe and we know where we are when we're in church, but sometimes when you go out there, uh, you need to have some knowledge. The Bible says to be ready with an answer. And so once a month, this isn't going to be a six-week series straight through, but once a month, you'll see the Coexist logo, and you can tune in, and I'll be dealing with different world religions. Today, I'm going to deal with America, a little bit of universalism, and religion. What religion does, but what Christianity does, because Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And for the next few months, once a month, I'll cover Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Antichrist, Scientology, Mormonism, what they believe, Jehovah's Witness. I will read from their Bible, and then I will read from our Bible, and then you tell me if you think that we serve the same God. And I'm not going to just tell you what I think, but we're going to open the Word of God and see what it says, and then you'll have a ready answer, something to say when the Jehovah's Witness, and somebody sent me just the other day, this is so timely, uh, a, a text that they had got on Instant Messenger, Facebook Messenger, and it was Jehovah's Witness reaching out and sending out, can I contact you and tell you my story? Uh, and, you know, Christians are just busy posting the, what they had for lunch. And all these world religions are reaching out because I'll tell you why. They know that America is up for grabs. But not if the people of God have something to say about it and stand up for truth. And so we're going to expose a little bit of universalism today. And today is just kind of the introduction for the difference in religion and people saying that we all serve the same God and you should be able to just believe what you want to believe. But that is not the truth because Jesus Christ begs to differ. He said it himself. So this coexist series, you see the bump, bumper sticker coexist and it has all the different religions. And I, I agree that as people we coexist and we love all. And this has nothing to do with discrimination or hate as someone would like to say uh, that that's what we're doing. A lot of people like to use that term today. But I'm just simply out to tell you that all other religions are false. The Word of God, the Bible is the only truth. And there is but one God on the podium of the world. And there's no other gods to stand next to him. So let's turn to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. I know you'll be with me this morning. But though we or even an angel from heaven because that will happen, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As a matter of fact, my grandfather, when a Jehovah's Witness would come in, he would be nice. They'd come on the property. He would say, you can turn right around and go right back out. And they'd say, but sir, and he was, he was trying to be nice, but he was kind of authoritative. And he would say, my Bible tells me that I'm not even supposed to allow you on my property it's a curse if you add to or take away from the true gospel. And then he follows it up again in Galatians chapter 9, the very next verse. I said it once is basically what he's saying. And I'm going to tell you again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than what you have received, let him be a curse. Father, we thank you today for your word, for the truth that we stand. This is a place of a voice for truth. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. All God's people said yes. I will stand at this pulpit today, and I will declare that Jesus Christ is the only way, unapologetically. There is no other way to heaven, and there is no other God. And I know that Christians will be with me in here this morning. I don't have to ask for your help at all. We aim to silence all the falsehoods for our children by making sure that people are introduced to truth. Truth is a person you need to meet. It's not something you discover as some theology. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want to know what's the truth today, just follow Jesus. And this series has nothing to do with hate or discrimination. I'm just going to show you the differences 
and expose the lies between world religion. And we won't get into that till next month because we're just going to talk about a little bit of religion today. Our children are growing up in a time when they are telling them that there is not just one God, but there are many gods that has different names. And how many can agree that we are living in the end times right now? Well, the Bible says in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, he says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's a little bit of what we were starting to experience a moment ago. And a matter of fact, Wednesday night in 180, listen, if your child is not in 180 or in a good Holy Ghost filled youth group, that's what they need more than any sport or any extracurricular activity that you could name. The young people came Wednesday night, and when we started worshiping, we extended worship song after song after song until not only the front, but the entire stage began to fill up with young people, and we were jumping in. Pray, check it out on our Instagram. The power of God come down in worship. And listen, when they're being told otherwise that there are a bunch of other gods and there are other things that you can believe and whatever you determine for yourself, subjective morality is true, it's time that the church rise up and swing a sword, not only for our our truth but for the truth of our children we are to serve and protect our children and for too long for too long youth have been neglected it is a good thing to put emphasis on youth and a great part of the budget towards youth because today they're being told lies out there six days a week and they need to have a voice for truth could I get some help in here is this microphone okay in here is it too loud or is it all right it's okay all right turn it up no I'm just kidding uh So you see Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, God said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh, right? Well, any time that God tries to do something, the devil tries to pour in more darkness, wickedness, and evil. So when God starts pouring out his spirit on all flesh, that's what we're experiencing right now. And I've told you it's about to be a year of increase and harvest in the house of God. Then the devil, as we see out there, begins to pour out more darkness and more wickedness. But you have to understand that when God pours out his light, it swallows up and overcomes all of the other darkness. And I'll tell you why. Romans chapter 5 and verse 20 says it like this. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sin more and more, so more wickedness the devil pours in, more evil that comes into the world that we see right now, God's grace becomes even more abundant. And so there's a wave of darkness over this world, but there is a wave of glory coming to the house of God that I've been talking about that will swallow up anything that the enemy can bring. The true church will catch the wave of the glory and will outshine all of the darkness. Just at the moment when people come into the presence of God and they feel like in this wicked world that there's no hope for them, the grace of God comes in even more strong and more powerful and rescues them and pulls them into the fold. We are living in troubled, troubled times in America. People fighting over the right to kill babies, same-sex kissing on TV and even further, and the wave of darkness comes so swiftly that there really is coming a day that my great-grandfather prophesied where you'll not be able to have a television in your house. I mean, that's coming. You have to understand. Satan wants the children, and he wants this next generation, and we must swing a sword of truth all the time. I'm going to preach a message to our young people soon that you should care. When there is stuff that's happening that you know is wrong, don't be silent. You should care. Because when you stand, that's when Shammah, God is with you, not when you hide or you cower back and wait for something to happen. You see, I didn't have to tell some of you seasoned saints of God who the truth is. We know that, but our children are being taught in school otherwise. Yet, we don't have to be afraid of the wave of darkness because there was another dark time in the Word of God where the sorcerers and and the, the men of power threw down their rods and became snakes and tried to show the man of God that they had power, but the man of God threw a rod down that became a bigger snake and swallowed up the other snakes. And that's exactly what God's going to do because, listen, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 is possibly one of the greatest examples of the, the glory of God coming in this last day. It says, darkness as black as night. How many know this is true? Covers all the nations of the earth. I mean, right now, let's just think about it. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears on you. Are you all in here this morning? 
Darkness covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises on you. So then you back up to verse 1, and it says, Arise, shine, because your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. It is the hour for the church to rise and shine because God is putting his glory on the church right now, which is why we're not backing up, which is why we're not saving up, which is why we're not waiting for a better time. When the darkness comes, the glory of the Lord arises on the church. And so you read in verse 3, all nations will come to your light. Man. All nations, somebody shout, all nations, not just America, will come to your light. Mighty kings and presidents will come to see your radiance. I love that. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. You ought to give God praise in the house this morning. That means your son's coming home, your daughter's coming home, your husband's coming home, your wife, your brother. Look and see during these times the greatest thing that's going to happen in these dark times is not just miracles in the church but everyone is coming home it is the word of God if you stand on it and speak it the glory of the Lord is rising on the last day church your sons are coming from distant lands your little daughters will be carried home it says blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you in Matthew chapter 11 so you see Christianity, if I can calm down and teach for a moment, Christianity will not be the religion of the Antichrist. He'll not be teaching the teachings of Jesus, but simply be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And although Christianity is the largest religion in the world right now, it's also in our time the most persecuted religion in the world. This Antichrist spirit is already moving in the earth. Every new law that's passed is against the church. Every new law is designed to put its foot on the neck of the man of God or preachers and silence the church with more rights to the homosexual, more rights to the Muslim, more rights to the abortionist, more rights to anybody than those of a Christian. So how then, during these times, do you keep joy while all of this is going on? Let me tell you. How do you have joy when you feel depressed for all that abounds? How do you have joy when you look and see the news? Well, you you look at what Jesus said in Matthew 5.11. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. We're going to be blessed in the midst of it. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Jesus said rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they they the prophets which were before you. They did it to the prophets. They did it to Jesus. So we need to rejoice in the fact that when they do it to Christians, the word lets us know that we are on the right track. The Antichrist religion will not be a, a one religion. It will be multiple religions that say coexist and this universalism thing that is a lot of religions where new age and humanism or self-worship or whatever feels good to yourself or whatever you think is truth is okay, this kind of subjective morality, universalism, it's already filtered into this generation massively. And you need to know that universalism is really slipping into the church today. This morning, they may not have everybody in the congregation because of the pandemic, but those that have ran 5,000 and 10,000 people have fallen for universalism, not every church of that size, but a lot of them, and, and saying that everybody is going to heaven, just wants you to feel like everyone's going to heaven. It's really a gospel that I compare to Little League Baseball today, that whether you lose or you win, everybody gets a medal. That's not the case when it comes to Christianity in heaven. Even the Pope a few years announced back that you don't have to even believe in God to go to heaven. And that's universalism. That's saying that everybody that has ever been born is going to heaven. You're going to be in heaven with Hitler. You're going to be in heaven with Charles Manson, every racist, every murderer right alongside you. No. Part of the joy of heaven is going to be that everybody there loves what God loves and hates what God hates. Amos, listen to me, said that in the last days, read the Bible, He said that there would be a famine in the land, not of food or of water, but of hearing of the word of God. There would be a famine. 
It says in Amos that people will look for the Word of God, but they won't be able to find it. You might say, how can that be with everything that's out there now and all the podcasts and all that stuff? Listen, there are preachers everywhere today, more than ever. How can this be? There's more Bible schools than ever before. There's more voices than ever before. But Amos didn't say there would be a shortage of voices. He said there's a, listen, there would be a, a, not a famine of voices because we have a thousand podcasts and we have all, there would be a famine of truth, which is why God's been speaking to me possibly about our church, the Ark Church, promoting the fact that we are a voice for truth, which in essence is a voice for Jesus. He said there'd be a famine of truth inside those voices. As a matter of fact, Timothy said there will be so many voices in the last days that you will be able to, and I quote, heap them up. And that's the way that it is right now. Paul said there'd be so many voices in the last day that they will scratch and itch to make you feel good. So how is there then a famine? Well, it's not a famine of hearing. It's a famine of hearing the truth of the word of God and being unashamed to preach it. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way as far as religion goes and universalism and we're all serving the same God and we're all one big happy family and we're all going to heaven no matter what. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God, Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. You want to know how to have eternal life? John 17, 3. The way to have eternal life is Jesus. I saw the YouTubes of Oprah Winfrey saying, and I quote, it was a little bit arrogant of Jesus to proclaim that he is the only way. I'm sorry, Oprah. He is the only way. He's the only way. He's the truth, and he is the life. <laughs> No man comes to the Father but by me. And when Obama stood up and said, this is no longer a Christian nation, but we are now a Christian nation and a Muslim nation and a Hindu nation, and people started to cheer, just coexist and accept, I'm sorry, I can't align with that agenda because America is still a land that trusts in the name of God, Jehovah, in God we trust, and that is one God, not many gods. This generation's being bombarded from every direction. And if you don't pull your kids in and help them understand that universalism is wrong and help them understand why they believe what they believe, I guarantee a Muslim child can tell you. You better get your truth straight in your children. That's why we've had entire summer long intensive that's that's attended by a few teenagers that are given to that, even though it's open to all because truth is being attacked. Our God, Jehovah, is not the same as all other gods. The word of God is the only truth. There are no other Bibles that are okay because we're living in a different day. You have to have that truth. And listen, we can't allow soccer practice to trump or, or outdo in time that we give to the word of God and to church. Which is why I still refuse to let go of Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. More often than not, when people come to me with their children, they say, well, this is what's going on and this is what's happening. And I was like, how much, where, where, where is your child at? Are they in 180? Do you bring them on Sunday night to the care group where they sit down and study the Word of God in smaller groups and interact and quote Scripture as much as you can get them in? It is important in these days. Listen, if you're letting your child miss 180 or youth group on Wednesday night for homework, I got two words for you. Stop it. That's coming from your pastor. Truth is being attacked. Figure out a way to do homework and let them come so they can get some truth. If you don't have a good youth group in your church right now, you better find one. And I'm not just trying to promote our church. There are many churches that I know, colleagues, that have great youth groups. And I'm telling you right now, in a few years, if we don't fight for truth, if we don't concentrate a little bit on truth for our young people, there won't be a church of tomorrow. Oh, how do you know that? Because the top 10 churches of 1970 no longer exist. You know what happened? They quit investing the truth in children and young people all right, that's a whole nother message. But truth, truth is a priority because someone shout yes. Listen, cut something out, but don't trim God's time. Truth is a priority because their faith, listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if faith comes by hearing, other spirits come by hearing. And if they're hearing something all week long and not getting truth mixed in there, listen, it doesn't have to be a ton, but a little bit of light commands a lot of darkness to go. As long as they know the truth. The truth will set them free. 
So I want to expose very quickly the lie that we're all one God, just different names. Next month, we'll tackle Islam. When you see this logo come up, and I don't know what Sunday it'll be, it just depends on what we've got going on. But Islam, I'll talk about who Allah is and why they hate Israel. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to open up the Bible, and when we see what the Bible has to say between that God and our God, you tell me if you think it's the same God. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20. That's next month. But Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1, talking about all gods, universalism, religion, we're all the same. And God spake all these words, saying, he spoke this, all right? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Here we go. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of those that hate me, and showing mercy, he says, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments." One person might say, well, you know, you're just reading out of the old law again. Yes, I, I know that. Yet one of all of the Ten Commandments, every one of them is affirmed in the New Testament. It is still a binding thing. You, you, we, we are free from the man rituals of the law, but thou shalt not steal is still a commandment. Thou shalt not kill is still a commandment. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Oh, I'm free from the law. I'm free from the law. Jesus abolished the law. No, it says he came to fulfill the law. We talked about that last week. He, he killed the man-made religious part of the law. So let me just say this. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I've seen people all my life say, well, I love God. I love God. Smoke, smoke, drink, drink, cuss, cuss. I love God. Now, if you love him, number one, you'll be in his house. Well, there's a pandemic going on. I understand that. Put a mask on, a hazmat suit, do something, but be in the house of God. If you love him, be in the house of God. You, you would be in his word. You you'd tell people about him. So listen, don't even tell me that you love me as a person and you're out there working for the enemy and helping him. Listen, there's no double agents in this thing. Get real. Titus says it like this teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's just get back on track here for a second and setting this series up. All religion is is a list of do's and don'ts that have nothing to do with the soul of a man or a woman. No power to help them do or to not do. The last few Catholic funerals that I've been to, the priest got up there and literally talked about what a bad life these people had and how they were alcoholics and how they died in their alcoholism, but thank God we will see them another day and everybody in that building did a bunch of religious things. I remember when I was young going to my first Catholic funeral, I, had, I did more up-downs than I did at the gym. I mean, up, down, kneel, grab this, say this, here comes the incense, there comes the water, stick your tongue out. I wonder if they're doing that in a pandemic right now, serving, sticking the tongue, I don't know. But why go through all of that? Physical religious rituals that deal with only the outside. That's religion. Even growing up Christian, can I say, some of us know that are old enough, Christians have been too religious at times as well. I mean, it was how you looked on the outside that mattered. As a matter of fact, they would tell the women, and my mom would tell you that they would say, listen, get those man's clothes off and come in here in a dress, and then you can worship with us after that. And that's, that's religion. It deals with the outside. If a man came in with a beard, good Lord. If he came in with a beard and long hair, they would say, go out and clean up your face and come in here and look like a holiness man, and then you can come in here and worship with us. It wasn't until the late 70s that some charismatic churches began to break out and shake free from that. Some churches today are a little too free. I mean, they come in wearing stuff, and I'm like, my Lord, you ain't that delivered. But it's true. 
I preach the message on what not to wear, and I put those little athletic shorts on. Ain't for church. That's, that's for the back of the YMCA. One time a pastor told me about a guy, true story, a few, well, I'd say about two, three decades ago, moving back towards the 70s, that he had long shoulder-length hair. And listen, he was a killer guitarist, and this church needed help. And he had a beard, and he had long hair, and they would preach him into hell every Sunday, but he kept coming to church. And guess who was Jesus in the Easter program every year? Can you imagine how confusing that was for the children? They're looking in their children's Bible, and he's got long hair and, and a beard. And they, the Bible says, listen, they plucked his beard. Jesus had a beard. But they'd preach him into hell. But every year, they would say, would you be Jesus? And then they see the picture of Jesus out, out front that some of the churches had, you know, with his, with his little soft eyes and a little sick lamb in his hand and, and, and long hair and a beard. But then they would preach this guy into hell every year and use him for Easter. So talking about religion, one old preacher, and I remember this is a true story. He got up and said this a long time ago when I was a kid. He goes, I ain't seen my wife's elbows in 40 years. She'd wear those long, you know, religious dresses where all only her fingers would poke out. And one old man leaned over and said, he's got five kids, he's seeing something. <laughs> Religion deals only with the outside. And, and, and listen, I love my Catholic brothers and sisters. They make the best church members when they come or when they go to church because they're faithful and they tithe and they track that visually in the Catholic church. One of my pastor friends actually said, you know, sometimes I feel closer in spirit to Catholics than I do to Christians who deny the Holy Ghost because he said at least Catholics are open to the supernatural. They're always looking for the tortilla Jesus or, 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 or Mary in a pancake or Jesus in a Cheeto or something like that, but they're open to the supernatural. But listen, religion, let me say, rubbing beads together, praying over beads, confessing to a man. Those are things that deal with the outside when Christianity deals with the inside. Listen, if you get the inside fixed, the outside will take care of itself. You don't have to tell a sinner you are a sinner. They already feel that if they come into a house of conviction. You just got to let them taste and see that the grace of God is good, and then things begin to happen. And listen, don't you get discouraged that you have some rough edges or some places to fix in your life still. Welcome to be a human if you have issues. Holiness is a process. Just keep coming to church. Keep giving to God. Keep raising your hands, and the more you do, the more it will fall off of you. Religion deals with the outside. Doesn't matter if you have long hair. Doesn't matter if you come to church straight from work, whatever you're wearing. We're here to change the inside. That's the difference in Christianity and religion. Also, Christianity, listen, gives us power to overcome what we used to be. Yeah, everything changes when you come to the altar, but then there's some changes you have to make externally outside of that. And Christianity gives you the power to make those changes. You can say, and how many can wave at me and shout, yes, I am not the person I used to be before I found Christ. So where would you be? The song we used to see, we, we would sing, where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see through eyes of love. A hopeless case, an empty place, if not for grace. So basically in this series, you can slip me a note. If I don't cover over six months a religion of, of the world that maybe you would like some clarity on or some scripture on or a comeback on, uh, you know, and I just barely taste, touched on Catholicism because of the religion. It's so popular even in our area, the, the outward religion, the rituals. If you, if you want to know what to say to a Catholic friend, tell them Christianity changes you on the outside where Catholicism follows rituals, practices, and priests that only deal with the outside and the inside never changes. So as long as you do these rituals, this or that basically, then you've performed what you need to do, but you feel not changed on the inside and you continue to live outwardly the same exact lifestyle. So we can talk about more of that later. Uh, here's another thing about just coexisting as universalism. Uh, our God, and I know it can get some help in here, is the only God that actually showcases his power. 
in the world today. Ask any other person of any other religion if they've ever had a bona fide miracle within their mosque or from their God. Ask a Muslim if they've ever had a healing. Ask a Buddhist if they've ever cast out a devil. I could stand up here for two hours and tell a verified miracle after miracle of the 33 years or so of this church. And how many of you can say that you've had a miracle healing of some kind or a miracle from God? Raise your hand as high as you can. Come on, lift it up as high as you can. A miracle from God. And those, each of you have a story from that, of a miracle from God. Ask any other religion if they've ever seen their God do a miracle. Elijah asked the prophets of Baal. He said, where's your God? Is he on a journey? He said, is he in the bathroom? My great uncle used to sing a song, Glenn Ledbetter, my great uncle. God's not dead. He's still alive. Why? Because I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him like a freight train in my blood when I'm singing graves into gardens. Listen, when we worship this morning, what I felt this morning was not from this world. There is something to our God that showcases his power. And listen, I've seen talent. I'm a musician, and I have witnessed talent in concerts. I've walked through Riverfest and heard them playing the music, and I didn't feel what I felt this morning when I was up front lifting my hands. So it's not the music. It's the fact that our God shows up when two or three are gathered together in his name, and we start lifting him up. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. God, Jehovah, is the only God that showcases his power in the world today. Ask those that are serving all of the gods, what has your God done for you in this last week or month or year or a lifetime? There's no other religion where demons cry out when people full of the Holy Ghost even walk by. This happened to Paul. A woman began to follow Paul around saying, I know who you are, man of God, man of God. This is the man of God, as she would declare. And when Paul found out and recognized that that demon was trying to call attention to itself, he turned around and cast the devil out of that big mouth woman, or whatever she was. That's the D- DLV translation, the Devin Lightner version. <laughs> but she was delivered. Paul cast out the devil. Listen, why do men that are demon-possessed and women that are demon-possessed When a man of God or a woman of God is walking through places in other countries, you ask a lot of missionaries this, and in crowds of thousands, the demon-possessed people will run up and say, we know who you are. We know who you are. Demon-possessed people cry out. Drug-addicted people cry out. We know who you are. One bishop that I've talked to on the phone a couple of times, he's Holy Ghost filled, was walking down the street in America, no Bible, jeans and T-shirt, And a man comes running up to him and falls down and says, I'll bow my knee, I'll bow my knee. Gone on drugs right on the side of the the sidewalk on the street. And the bishop said, and I'll cast that devil out of you. Why does even hell recognize the power of God in someone, the one true God? Ask your Muslim friend if that's ever happened to them. It's happened to me. I was at a truck stop one time. And I went into the truck stop. And when I walked in, a man followed too closely behind me that was demon-possessed and began to rattle off and tell me things that I had done in another state the day before. I turned around and said, in Jesus' name, and he scattered right out of the truck stop. Why? Because I'm full of the Holy Ghost, and God in you, Jehovah, is the only God that is recognized by hell and heaven together. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, listen, my mother has been chased down in grocery stores before from aisle to aisle to aisle when someone's saying, what is it about you? Well, I know who you are. I know what you are. Listen, ask your Buddhist friend if they've ever had a demon-possessed person pick them out of a hundred people and say, I know who you are. That'll happen when you're full of the Holy Ghost. Walking with the one true God. Are y'all in here this morning? Let me show you something else that God did for us, our God. Not, Not universalism, all gods, our God. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And I'll come back to this in a moment. To whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Listen, he didn't reveal himself to us in our heads. 
He, he didn't meditate in a cave, which we'll talk about next month with Muhammad, and got all the revelations one man in a matter of just a little bit of time. Listen, there's something different about Jesus than any other religion. He's not like Muhammad. He's not like Joseph Smith of the Mormons or so many other people that, that will show you in weeks to come that sat down in a cave and got a revelation, wrote their entire Bible. Not our Jesus. Listen, one man wrote the Koran. Our, our Bible is proven, and I told you this at the beginning. Listen, if you want more proof on the fact that the Bible is true, I've scientifically proved it, chronologically aligned with other uh, uh, publications throughout all of time in the series Believe at Christmas about the Word of God. Listen, our Bible was written and proven by historical books right along with the timeline. It was written in stone and leather and clay. It's been proven from the original writings of Moses and the Pentateuch. Listen, if it were, it's been passed down for thousands of years, as I proved. If it would have been folklore or, or there was any contradiction in the Word of God, how many know somebody would have exposed it by now? It's been written over different continent, com, continents rather, by over 40 different prophets who never knew each other and never had one contradiction in the Word of God. They never knew each other, born in different generations. And if there was something wrong with it by now, it would have been all over CNN. Because, listen, the devil has the media. I mean, we've figured that out. Don't you think they would expose the Word of God as a fake? But you know why? They can't burn it enough. They can't put it in prison enough and make it die. They can't stone it away because it's the only truth. Jehovah is the only God. Jesus is the only way. His word will stand the test of time. His word must go forth. And though darkness comes over this world like a wave, Isaiah tells us that when that happens, which is happening now, church, get ready for the glory of God to rise upon you and then arise and shine for your light has come and all nations will come to the light. All of your children, all your sons, all your daughters. It says everyone is coming home. Man, I wish I had some help in here this morning. They're going to be cheering for my homes. How about Jesus? I said the light has come. <sighs> Go to the Holy Land. Now, you can see several monuments. And I studied a documentary. Matter of fact, for this series, when I preached it straight through, Years and years ago, I did an 80-hour study on world religion, and one of them was a documentary I studied on Jerusalem and the clashing and the difference in religions around there. And God, God in that area told his people to build a monument for things like where he caused water to come out of the rock monuments to his signs and wonders so that all would know that he is the one true God. So go back to Acts chapter 1 and verse 3. Basically, it says, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. I just have to stop and say, well, Jesus didn't wear flip-flops. He shooed himself, all right? <clears throat> to also whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Listen, Jesus wasn't just one guy in a cave. Jesus didn't write all of his plan down and tell you what to do. Jesus came here and lived the plan in front of us. He didn't tell you to fast. He fasted 40 days. He didn't tell you to turn the other cheek. He turned the other cheek while they slapped and beat and plucked his beard. He didn't tell you how to love your enemy. Jesus showed you how to love your enemy. And I appreciate a God that didn't just sit down somewhere and write it out and shove it out and say, now, do this. But he lived it out in front of us, which is why he's the only God and the only way. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 14. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm not going to be long this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 14. I appreciate the people of God being in the house of God on such a wickedly cold day. Man, it's a great crowd in here this morning, and, and that snow started coming down right at go to church time. I was like, mm-hmm. That's what happens. Listen, I've been to Florida, and I love my Florida brothers and sisters, but listen, you all are, are lightweights. They canceled church when it was 51 degrees outside. I was like, give me a bicycle. I'll go ride on the beach right now. Have you ever been where it's three degrees outside and then you have the wind? Can I get a witness in here today? And listen, it's going to get worse this week. Woo! Buckle down. Here we go. Brother Sod's plugging the buses in to run on Wednesday night. You got to plug them in so they start up. 
appreciate all of our bus people, and everybody said amen. Appreciate all our church ministries, but yes. So, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 14. You shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people that are around you. You see, people want to say that we're all the same and, and just, you know, it's one God and one religion. Do not go after other gods of the people that are around you. Second Kings chapter 17 and verse 33. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. They feared the Lord. Doesn't that sound like America? But they served their own gods after the manner of all the other nations. That's what's happened in America today. That's America's problem. It's the sin of Solomon. Solomon didn't worship other gods, but he allowed his wives to bring in graven images into his gardens. In the 1970s, Islam match, uh, uh, launched a, a massive campaign in Europe and America to overtake Christianity and to come into those countries and bring Islam. And 50 years ago, it failed miserably. They were met with such fierce rejection that they turned around and they went home. Now, fast forward 50 years later to now, England and Great Britain have nearly completely shut their doors to Christianity and Islam they have fallen prey to. Here in the United States, why do you think we have so many mosques now in the United States? Why did they want to build a, a mosque or a monument at ground zero after 9-11? And they did. Hey, listen, have you looked around and seen that everywhere that Muslims have killed an enormous amount of people, they want to build a monument to it? Is America going to go down as the stupidest country in the history of the world in the name of political correctness? Yeah, these thousands of people who died jumping out of burning buildings, their flesh burning, we're going to build a monument in the name of that religion. Solomon didn't collect the monuments and false gods by himself. He knew the truth, listen to me, but he let his wives bring them in. And how this starts and how it starts in America and how it wasn't okay 50 years ago but it is now is that you no longer get offended by sin. No longer offends you anymore. And so here in the United States of America, we have all this going on. And you know, say we, in America, we say, well, you know, as long as I'm not doing it, it's okay. As long as you're doing it, I guess it's all right. That's called tolerance. And I came this morning to let you know the Holy Spirit spoke to me yesterday when I was writing my notes and said tolerance is a spirit. What you tolerate, you will eventually coexist with. And that's what Solomon did. He tolerated it. And then coexisted with it, and God's anger was kindled. And I'm not talking about coexisting with humans. Don't get me wrong. There is no hate. There is no separate. Listen, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Can someone shout yes? And we love all, but we don't say that your God's the same as mine because he ain't. It's not the same Bible. It's not the same God. It's not the same religion. I'm talking about truth versus lies and falsehoods from hell. Listen, Paul only tolerated that demon and that lady long enough until he turned around and said, I can't tolerate anymore because if I tolerate her for another day, I'm going to have to coexist with that spirit. And Paul said, get out. He loves everybody, but I like what you said right there. Say it again, sister. He got to go. Didn't Timothy, didn't Paul tell Timothy from such turn away? There's got to be a turning away a little bit instead of tolerance. Listen, tolerance. Lot was vexed with the conversation of the wicked, meaning he was frustrated. And so God went in and got him out and destroyed the entire city for judgment. Now, you have to understand, yes, that was Old Testament. The Bible says that when darkness comes in, grace begins to abound more and more. But I'm going to tell you right now, for what's going on in our world and country, I've never seen more grace from God than we're seeing right now. So don't say that God's not full of grace. Buddy, he's given us grace upon grace right now for what's being allowed in our countries. Tolerance says, I'm not going to do it, but it's okay if you do it in my house. And, and some people know, if you study your Bible, when you see the life of Solomon, that mentality almost destroyed him. And it's just as so much of a sin if you permit it in your house. America. 
For America to permit what is going on in this country is the sin of America. And, and I know that in the polls, most Americans don't agree with what's going on in this country, but most of them don't care by saying, well, we have to coexist and make room for all these other religions. Now, that's the sin of America. And if America doesn't repent, it will pay the same price that Solomon paid. Some Christians think it's all right to just laugh at it as long as you don't do it. We laugh at all the SNL skits, and we laugh at all of the sitcoms and all of the, the things that they do, and we allow men kissing men and women kissing women as long as, we, listen, we're turning into a Solomon nation because we're permitting it. Are you in here this morning? In the 1970s, there wouldn't have been Muslims working in airports after 9-11, and we wouldn't have, listen to me, 2,500-plus Muslim mosques in America today. It's because the core value of our nation 50 years ago was Christianity, but we have allowed tolerance and we have permitted all of this to come in because of weak leadership and weak churches. Weak vo vo uh, voices for truth, which is why I am not interested in putting on a billboard in this city what we have to offer. And couldn't we say we have good music? I'm not interested in even promoting so much what we have to offer for our children or our teens as I am in promoting the, promoting the fact that this place is a voice for truth where we don't back down, we don't permit, we don't accept, and we don't tolerate what belongs to darkness. We are the light of the world. And listen, if the church wants the glory of God, then quit sitting down and quit hiding and quit taking a weak approach to the fact that we can't permit the devil to come in the house. We can't permit demons to follow us around. We can't tolerate sin with our children. We have to stand for truth. And Isaiah says when we do that then you can stand up and arise because then I'll put the glory of God on you and the church will arise I'm going to say it again and all nations will come to your light Whoo, man I could preach in here this morning somebody shout yes so 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 powerful to think about the fact we have to stand listen David had like 19 sons but he had two Solomon at the end of his days, repented of, of tolerance. But Absalom did not, and he died without God. Abraham tried to help God. God said, I'll give you a son. Abraham took his concubine and had a son, Ishmael. God still gave him Isaac, cooked, took, you know, kept his word. And to this day, we'll talk about that in, in the Islam, hopefully, if I have enough time, message. They're, they're still fighting to this day over one or two acres called Hebron within that country in, in, in Jerusalem. And that will ultimately lead to the battle of Armageddon where God will put his foot down on the Mount of Olives and the God of Isaac will finally show everyone in the world that he is the one true. Listen, I want popcorn and a recliner for that one. I'm telling you. And then when he looks over and points at us and the whole world knows, come on, somebody. Whew, man. Mm-hmm. He's not like other gods. You can't compare him to any other gods. We are not universal. Buddhism, Hinduism, Muslim, Christianity, they are not the same. And I encourage you over the next six months to get in on this series when we do. Know your enemy, Satan. Know the differences in false religion and Christianity. I'm living in, we are living in a generation where the teenager grows up into college and then college they begin to question because they listen to all of the voices that are out there in podcasts and all the books and all the things that are out there and tolerance becomes more powerful. Can't we just, why do we have to call it sin? I wish we didn't have to judge them so hard and we tolerate and we tolerate and tolerate until that spirit follows us around the rest of our lives and dogs you. You can't tolerate it. Know the Bible and I've told you before, my favorite equation, information information that you gather from the house of God produces knowledge. And when you have knowledge, knowledge produces understanding. And when you understand some things about world religion and you understand some things about the word of God and his grace and his love, but how he doesn't tolerate, he's a jealous God, then that produces trust. And when you begin to trust in him, then that produces faith. And you can have faith in the things that God has for you. So the reason why so many false religions come to America, and I'm going to close, is because they know that America is up for grabs. They know that Americans are too busy planning their next vacation and too busy keeping up with other sports and all that stuff, and they move in and they get to our children that we're too tired to worship twice on Sunday. So 
Over the last 30 years, most churches, I would say 90%, have cut out a service because we're too tired to. Listen, they used to come to church Sunday school before church and then have church and then a bucket of chicken and then go back to church. I grew up in it, y'all. I'm going to tell you something. Church was a lifestyle, not just a, an event. God was a life. Man, we lived it. And listen, we live for the chicken. No, I mean, we live for Jesus. <laughs> so these world religions, they know that we're up for grabs. Don't know if it's time to get my kids to 180 on Wednesday night. Listen, terrorists are willing to die for what they believe. False religion knows that America's up for grabs. So they're saying, listen, we don't have to get them to believe Satanism or even believe Islam. We just have to get them to say that all are the same and coexist and we're all going to heaven as one big happy family holding hands singing we are the world and everything's going to be all right. We don't have to convince them of our religion. We just got to make them believe that we're all the same. And push hate and tolerance until they realize that maybe I am hating. Maybe I am judging. No, 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 no. This is the word of God. The word of God. The truth is what judges every lie. Could I get some help in here this morning? Listen, we can coexist as human beings and in love, but you need to have some, some loving reactions to people that, that need some. So I was just talking to a mechanic Oh, six months ago, working on one of my old trucks, and, and he had some stuff and questions, but because I've had some knowledge, I was able to shed some light, and he's like, man, I, 40 years I've thought this way, but that one scripture, I, I didn't even know that was in the Bible. Listen, you can save someone's life by a little bit of knowledge. You can save someone's, someone's eternity. We can coexist. And listen, you can tolerate. Some of you go to a workplace where you got coworkers, and it's, it's a tough environment, they will see your light and they will see your love. It's not that you come down on them and you wear your turn or burn t-shirt and always, but listen, when you have a little bit of knowledge, just, just a phrase of light, just a phrase of what the Bible says will always cut. The Bible says the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and it cuts asunder all the way down to the morrow, it says. When Jesus Christ and the cross are not the feature attraction and message in any religious event, you should watch out. And I'm talking about church too. If Jesus Christ and the cross and being set free, then you should, you should understand that there's a wolf in sheep's clothing trying to deceive you. Could I get some help in here and shouting back at me that it is time to stand in America? Could you shout yes? It is time to stand. If I could narrow it down to one religion that has come into and filtered into America, it would be paganism. Worshiping whatever you want, making your own decisions, subjective morality, determining what you think is right and wrong, and just kind of pushing the word of God aside. Otherwise, as long as you feel good about it, then it's right. The man who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, 35 million copies sold, Rick Warren, got up and said that Allah and Jehovah are the same and try to bring Muslims and Christians together into so that we could have some world peace and, and, and you know, just bring us all together. Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, Rick, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Listen, for someone that has a platform like that that could be swinging a wrecking ball for truth, stop trying to hurt the truth. You're not helping, you're hurting. Come out from among them. There is a them. We love everyone, but there is a them. And be separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And when I read from their Bible next month, you tell me if we're the same. And he says, God says, I'll receive you. So I started this once a, month, once a month series so I can hammer out some weapons for you and then for our children. God willing, I'll, I'll be sharing this in 180 as well. Hammer out some weapons for you to use with friends and family and even coworkers. If there's something that I don't cover, I'm opening this up monthly. Anytime, please approach me, text me, reach out to me and say, could you shed some light on this? And then I'll have a part seven 
uh, of possibly questions that have come in. I'll probably open it up so that you can write in some questions. Uh, how many know one more time the end is near? And I know the battle's going to get even hotter, and I don't want you to be deceived by false doctrine. I want you to know why we believe what we believe. Let's bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone here today. I thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of the Word of God. And I thank you, Lord, that universalism, God, we shed light on the fact that you are not the same as other gods. And God, as we look at this monthly, God, we pray, Lord, that you would give us the knowledge and the information to swing a sword, not just the love that comes. God, sometimes love is swinging a sword of truth. God, and I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to have the knowledge and the information to combat those that are coming against truth in this nation. God, those that are coming against truth in the workplace and in the educational system and for our children. God, let us have answers to give our children to counteract the answers that they are being given, the false answers. God, we commit in this house of God to be a voice for truth. And as we...